Hi everyone, it's Anthony here from Anthony's Hobby Corner. Hope you're keeping well. And uh, in today's video, I figured I'll do a a quick service and cleanup of a Lima um, Class 151 German electric locomotive. Now, typically, I don't I don't uh, run Limas. I've usually had uh, River Rossies and Rocos, etc. But uh, this is an amazing deal online, and I just couldn't pass it up. So I figured, let me just uh, take a chance on these ones. I've had many locomotives before that were uh, had ring field motors on them, so quite familiar with these. Uh, but uh, I always felt that River Rossi was a uh, a better quality product. Uh, but either way, this is a really good deal I got on these ones. So I figured, let me just uh, um, take this. It was it was um, as part of a lot and. Uh, Let's see if we can get it cleaned up and uh, and serviced and running. Okay, so the first step is to remove the shell. And uh, this is a cocoa unit, so I think it doesn't have the screw. It's the snap-on body, and that seems like it. Uh, so let's uh, put the screwdriver in here and just pry out the body. So it's going to pop right out. There we go. And I heard something moving inside in here. But, uh, yeah, so based on the interior of the shell, it seems like it was definitely designed for lighting uh, because there's the, uh, the translucent plastic here that carries the light. And so, um, but it doesn't seem like there are any lights in here. Well, that's easily fixed. Okay, so I'm going to slide this pin out so I can release the, uh, the rear truck. Somebody just comes out like that. We can clean this after. And this will help me now release the, uh, the front truck as well. So to release the front truck now, I just need to remove the, uh, the bottom part of this uh, of this of this truck here. And that's the bottom part of the chassis of the uh, truck, and this just slides through. Okay, so now we cut the heart of the locomotive here. So let's just remove all the gears. The contact.
Let's see, okay. It's bone dry, so obviously it's has no lubrication on here at all. I'm just checking the gears to make sure that none of the teeth have are broken. Seems to be okay. It's a little bit hard to get out, but uh, there we go. Yep, it seems to be fine. Wow, right away you can see a, a lot of a lot of dirt right on. Uh, this uh, this pin right here. Some lot of dirt here. It also looks like this locomotive has been run on some kind of carpet. Okay, gotta pull it out. Got the contact later on as well, but let me just get to the motor first. Okay, these, these springs are a little too tight. Now it comes one of the springs. Because I gotta be careful to grab the springs carefully. Okay, so I do have a little there's a plastic here where I put the springs in and I and, and the brushes and I soak them in some contact cleaner so leave that there put the spring will fall out in a second. So right now I'm open, opening up the um, the brush face of the motor. And there's another one right on the commutator here. They seemed quite gunked up. So now I'm going to put some contact cleaner in here and let it just soak for a bit. some contact cleaner and let the brushes and springs soak in there and then I'll wipe them off with a paper towel after just uh, 
Wow, I can see it already getting gunked up. A lot of gunk on there. The commutator is also in uh, pretty gunked up shape, even though it's uh, fairly smooth, but it's gunked up, so I need to clean that out. Now, the, these these Lima Lima um, Lima rotors, you can easily pull them out. Just got to be careful. There's a, there's a, a washer here. There's the commutator. That's one thing good about these uh, Lima rotors is that the gear is housed inside, and so therefore you can pull the whole commutator out without having to remove the, uh, the pinion gear. It's fairly clean inside, but uh, I'm gonna clean the whole entire inside with, some, with a cotton bud and some IPA. So I got some IPA here on a cotton bud. I'm just gonna clean the inside of the, uh, the motor housing. Just to get rid of any debris or any kind of uh, gunk that is uh, lined up inside. Yep, it's fairly clean. Also clean the the back of the face plate uh, brush face plate fairly clean but let's just give it a quick uh, Okay. Let's go for the commutator. I'm just going to clean with some IPA, just any debris on here, if there is any. Just to uh, give it a clean start. Yeah, not much dirt. Okay, so now I'm going to use some uh, a plastic safe contact cleaner that I've used in many of my videos before uh, to clean the um, the commutator. Lot of gunk. And you can see it just dissolve that gunk out. Well, it seems like the some some pieces from a from broken piece of washer is coming apart. But I do have some spare washers I can I have so thrust washers that I can put on there.
Okay, so now what I'm going to do is you'll notice that there's still a little bit of uh, residue that's on the uh, on the commutator, and it's going to embed it into the copper of the commutator. I'm now going to use uh, a little bit of um, brasso uh, to polish the commutator out, and you'll find that all that gunk comes right out. A little bit here. You can see it coming right out. And this just smoothens out the the surface as well. There we go, all the gunks out. And now on the cotton swab. So next I'm going to clean out the polish from the commutator and um, wipe it down. I need some IPA, clean it out. Nice and clean. There you go. Nice clean commutator. Hey everyone, I just checked uh, some of the Lima specifications and definitely it seems like there was there is no uh, thrust washer um, that sits right here on the spindle. It was just the uh, pieces of the uh, PCB board, uh, which is part of the uh, commutator here, that, that, had, that had basically peeled off. So, um, either way, I do have... Uh, a washer here that I could use uh, but I'm reluctant because um, I'm reluctant because seems like originally this didn't really, really come with a washer so either way I do have one here and we can use it if we need to but I'll just uh, I'm gonna first try it without the washer because there's, there seemed to be just no washer in the beginning here okay so I think we're done with the commutator it's good here I also cleaned the, the gaps between the uh, the commutator here, uh, each element to make sure there's no gunk. Very good there as well, and it's nice and polished, certainly so good. So I've also cleaned the the gear here. Uh, take any debris from the gear. Okay, so we're going to place that aside, and now we're going to clean the uh, contacts 
under the wheels here. This one you can just slide out. Okay, and now I'm going to clean the contact. I typically use contact cleaner for this one. And then I typically put a little bit of um, brass so and just polish it up as well so it, it has a clean surface. And then let's just clean the wheels here as well. So I've got some brass over here, and it's going to polish up the uh, contact point here. This is not really necessary, but I uh, figured that since I'm already here, I might as well clean it up. Well, okay, it's good to go.
Okay, and now time to clean the brushes and put the brushes back in. So as you can see, the uh, brushes have been uh, soaking in this little pool of contact cleaner here, so and a lot of debris has come out of it, so I just need to clean it up now and put them on. Grab them carefully. Clean the brush. Still some dirt. There we go. Okay, so let's carefully place the brushes in here. Carefully place the springs. There we go. And do the same for this one. And these things aren't aligned properly, so. There we go. Okay, now we need to clean the gears. Use some IPA. Please clean the little spindles here. There's lots of dirt here.
Likewise, I'm going to clean the rest of the gears. Okay, so the gears have been cleaned as well, so let's just uh, place them back into the rightful spots. Before I put the next gears in and put some lubrication on here. Now, typically, I use um, Woodland Scenics uh, Hobby Lube uh, Premium, uh, but um, and I'm by, by again by no means am I endorsing these these products. But uh, recently, I came across um, a product called Liquid Bearings, and I've been using this for servicing my uh, mechanical clocks um, and it's it's a hundred percent synthetic lubricant and I look at their website and they they also recommend them for model railroads and 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 they're safe on plastics and it's a hundred percent synthetic so I figured I might as well just give it a shot and see how it works on on this locomotive so here we go Okay, I just slip the uh, Yep, seem to work fine. Put a dab of it in the uh, bearings over here, and even less a dab on this side of the bearing. Okay, and I'm going to put a little bit of uh, conductor lube between the uh, the contact and the uh, wheel uh, wheel rods. Okay, so now that we're done with the motor uh, assembly, we can uh, 
we can now move over to the, um, the second uh, truck, which is the the uh, the contact for uh, contacts for one of the rails. Seems like it picks up uh, contacts from here for one side, and the other side is picked up from here. So let's clean this up. So just gotta make sure you don't uh, you you look at the orientation of the axle because if you spin it around you're gonna create a short later on because you're gonna you're gonna um, so you can make sure that uh, uh, so in this case you can see that the insulated side um, is facing that away so I'm gonna make sure that I uh, I remember that as I take them out. And it's very straightforward. You can just pull this out here, the center contact with the tension spring. Move that aside. And um, I'm gonna clean all of this with some uh, contact cleaner. Notice I'm keeping everything in the same orientation as I take them out, so it's easier to put them back. So I've got some contact cleaner. And this, and uh, the contact points. It's a shame that they haven't put a, a center contact to leverage the, uh, the additional center wheel. But I might modify this later on to add another piece of brass um, contact to the center. And then uh, leverage the center wheel as well as a good contact point. Right now, it's only using the, la the first and the last axle. Right. Spring, clean this. Okay, so this spring and pin is clean. Contact is clean. Okay, now let's just clean the the wheels. Um, I'm going to put a little bit of brasso on the on the wheel um, wheel on the flange here as well, just to clean it up. So it seems like someone's taken a some kind of grinder to this wheel, and oh my god, done a number on the wheel. But uh, oh well, that was absolutely unnecessary. But uh, I think I can polish it back up a bit. So I've got some brass cell here on a Q-tip. I'm just going to clean up the wheels and the axles. Quite a bit of dirt on there. I really don't understand why people actually grind, take these wheels to a to a to a grinder. There's really no need for it. If you can, you can actually polish it up with some brass so or clean it up with some contact cleaner.
just use a little bit of IPA to clean it up here. Okay, and now just clean the center piece of the axle because that's where the contact really takes place. Not too bad. Okay, well that's just one axle. I'm just going to do the remaining three the same way. Okay, so all three wheels are now cleaned up. And the center axles have also been cleaned as well. And the contacts, now it's just a matter of reassembling this rear truck. So we just go through the process here. Um, Now I noticed that the center wheel was in really good shape, so I'm going to now switch the center wheel to one of the external axles and put one of the external ones to the center because it's uh, been kind of worn out quite a bit. But again, keeping the orientation the correct way, so the insulation side away from me. There we go. Then screw this right back. Okay, the rear track is done. Now I just want to share with you, uh, I uh, I made an incorrect statement before. So um, if you recall, this piece of uh, lead weight was moving moving around inside the shell, and I thought there was a, a, a special cup that goes in here to hold it, uh, because out of a lot of Lima locomotives that I got, the other one that I actually got had a cup, but that was a different way of um of um fixing the uh the shell onto the onto the chassis that one actually had a screw going right through uh, but this one doesn't this one latches onto the chassis with those little tabs on the corner here and it's the in interior uh lighting lens that has a piece of plastic um like so that sticks from here that then keeps the lead piece in place uh, as the as the shell comes on down, but they they seem to have broken, and here's one of the broken pieces. So what I did was basically uh, there was actually a screw mount underneath here in the, in, in this uh, in this section. So I put a screw and a rubber washer and actually held the um, the lead uh, permanently down here uh, and freeing the shell from that uh, from that load. 
So it's the only modification I made here. Okay, time to put this back together. So I need to first slide this in from the top. That's how I took it out. So. There we go. Then I gotta mount the truck cover. Hold it in place and I'll put the screws. It's free to move and I'll put a dab of lubricant uh, where the plastic slide here slides here and also at the bottom here a bit. much smoother okay then we slide the rear truck over the tension spring you pull on the spring and you just put the clip in Okay, it's all in place. And put a little bit of lubricant on the uh, on the uh, wheel axles here. Put a, I'll put a dab on there. Now the lubricant I'm going to put on here by the axles. Uh, especially on the contact axles here is conductor lube. Um, reason is because I know that there's the brass uh, um, brass uh, contact strip in the center here that that actually uh, gets gets conductivity from the center drive axles. So from these axles, so I don't want any 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 lubricant going from the edges here over to the center and then insulating the connectivity. So put some conductor lube here for these bearings. Put a dab of 
all these gears. Okay, so the locomotive is now fully complete, serviced. Now I just have to clean the the shell. The shell is quite gunked up. Um, I did put it, put some soap and water on it, and uh, it still looks rather rather messy a bit. But uh, maybe I'll uh, assemble the locomotive and. Uh, we will we will see uh, how it runs, and then we can I can maybe just remove the shell after and give it a good good thorough clean. All right, so let's put the shell back on. All it is basically is a snap, so put it in here. Make sure the wires don't bind, so some space. we go well let's take it on to the track and see see how she runs here we go so we're at the layout just bear with me as I hold the camera in one hand and uh, place the loco on the track with the other yeah, I think she's not right yeah it's on all right let's see how it runs Well, There you go. Quite pleased with this locomotive. It seemed to have had many hours of, of operation prior to me purchasing it online. Um, but with a little bit of cleaning uh, and some TLC, they really come back to life pretty, pretty good. So I uh, hope you found the video useful. Um, if you have any thoughts, ideas please put them in the comment section and i'll be glad to uh, respond thank you